Hey, what's going on guys? I'm taking a quick break from some gardening work and my neighbor got this lawnmower for free and all she can tell me about it is that it doesn't work and that's why she got it for free. Uh, she knows that I do small engine repairs so she sent it my way and I thought I'd make a video going through the steps I take when I diagnose a lawnmower and um, hopefully this will help you out so that you can score a deal like this as well. Um, you'd be surprised how many lawnmowers you can pick up for free or under $20 and really it takes maybe 30 to 60 minutes of your time and usually it's free to fix. So let's get started. Now to start things off, I went ahead and checked the oil and it was just a little above the max fill line, not too bad. I went ahead and off camera, I pulled the recoil cord a couple times just to make sure that there was compression and that the engine was not seized. After that, I was gonna be checking for spark, so I went ahead and clamped the uh, brake down so that uh, the recoil cord would pull. And I went ahead and removed the spark plug with a deep well socket and it wasn't too bad I've seen worse but uh could definitely be cleaned a little bit put the boot back on the spark plug and put one foot on the mower and pulled the recoil cord with the other arm and it's hard to see on camera but there was a blue spark so I knew I had spark I had compression I checked inside of the gas tank and there was no fuel so I thought this is my lucky day I'm just going to add fuel and things will be good to go and you'll see my miserable pour as I was trying to see if I was even in frame and I was not watching what I was doing. So don't make this mistake. Put the entire nozzle in there and then toggle the safety mechanism to release the gas like that. Went ahead and put the spark plug on because I was about to try to start the engine and put the boot back on, but I noticed it just seemed really loose. So I went ahead and checked on the inside and the whole thing was just corroded with rust. Absolutely terrible. So not quite knowing what to do, I went ahead and uh, scraped some of the uh, rust off gently with a file and just kind of knocked out the dust and I was trying to think of what I was going to do to get the rust out. You want to be careful here not to bend any of the metal on the inside. Don't make um, things any larger than they have to be. It still has to grip around the end of the spark plug there. I dipped some uh, Q-tips in some vinegar and the acid in the vinegar will eat away at the rust. So I just did this repeatedly until the uh, Q-tips kind of came out acceptable. And when it was done, I went ahead and dried it with a few Q-tips and I put a dab of dielectric grease on the inside, just a little to keep um, any more corrosion at bay. And with that done and gas added, I figured this thing's gonna start right up, prime the carburetor and nothing. So I know I have compression, I know I have spark. I have gas in the tank, doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that gas is getting to where it needs to go. But I thought, let's check the uh, air filter and see if that's clogged. Because if that's clogged, then things are not going to work as well. Now, I've definitely seen worse air filters. I mean, this was dirty, but it's not clogged by any means. It's, not, it's still dry. It's not soaked with oil or gas or anything like that. So with the air filter removed, I just want to see if it was indeed the, the fault, though. So I primed the uh, carburetor again and pulled, and even with the air filter removed, it would not start. So that lets me know it is not an air problem. It is not a spark problem. It's not a compression problem. It's going to be a fuel problem. And um, more than likely, it's going to be the carburetor, which is right here. Definitely dirty on the outside, and I'm sure it's dirty on the inside. I don't know how this was treated, but from working on so many small engines, I know that most people do not use any fuel stabilizer, so I'm sure that this engine, or the carburetor rather, is completely gunked up with stale fuel. I put the vice grips on here to stop any fuel from the tank from leaking out after I pulled the hose from the carburetor, but the, the uh, hose was so stiff I could not get it removed, so I just had to pull it by hand and remove the vice grips. And I noticed it's just, a couple drops of gas coming out. So there's not even gas coming out of the gas tank, hardly at all. So you can see I even pulled the hose from the gas tank and it doesn't even have enough pressure to pour out, it just dribbles out from the, uh, it just runs down the bottom of the gas tank. Put a pipe cleaner in there and it's coming out covered in varnish and the smell was absolutely rancid when I did this. I'm trying to figure out how to remove the gas tank and I realize I have to take the covers off of the top 
and uh, you pry this plastic top off. There's going to be a couple screws on the underside there. And we'll get those out. And then finally, there's going to be one screw still holding the gas tank on, which you can see there. And with that removed, that frees up the gas tank and I pour it out and now the gas went into here clear and it came out looking like that only five minutes ago. So that is definitely nasty, nasty stuff. And again, the smell is absolutely rancid. If you have never smelled bad gas, uh, you'll know it when you smell it for sure. It doesn't smell anything like a gas station. Now the gas on the left in a jar is right from the gas can that I used and the gas on the right is what it looked like five minutes after being in that tank. I'm going to use some acetone with a funnel here to pour it into the gas tank and this is going to dissolve any of that varnish. And I'm just going to pour in enough to where it starts to trickle out um, where the hose was connected. And I'll just kind of lean it so I don't have to use any more acetone than I have to. And I'll let this sit for about 30 minutes and that should dissolve pretty much everything um, for all intents and purposes. And now the fun part of removing the carburetor. Before you do this, go ahead and take a lot of pictures of all of the linkages all, from many different angles, just in case you have any problems if you've never removed a carburetor or done this in your life. Check the gaskets on the outside of the carburetor. Remove the uh, screw on the bottom. In this case, it happens to be the main jet itself. And the bowl was absolutely corroded on there with uh, varnish. And there's a little gasket for the uh, main jet that I just took off and I went ahead and tapped the bowl to get it off and it fell into the bad gas. When I remove it, you'll be able to see all of the varnish on the inside there. It's just that yellow coating. Again, smells horrible. And I'm sure there's a lot of debris on the inside, but it probably got washed away in that jar. The float itself was really, really sticky. It barely wanted to move. There's hardly any play to it. Felt like I was gonna break it if I even moved it. And the outside was obviously very dirty. That doesn't necessarily affect the performance, but um, before you get started here, take a bobby pin. If you have a rubber uh, float needle seat right there, after you remove the float, um, go ahead and pull that out and that, that'll get all distorted if you use any carb cleaner on it. And I should have removed the uh, bowl gasket, the rubber O-ring that goes around where the bowl was attached to the carburetor. I forgot to do that. In this case, it didn't create a problem, but I uh, got the uh, float removed there. And you just kind of go to town with carb cleaner and a, a brush if you want. I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. I wish I did, but uh, I do this still by hand. Spray everywhere in all of the little ports and jets and orifices and whatever you want to call them. And wear safety glasses. If you've never done this, you are going to spray in a small area with that carb spray and it will come out another little hole and spray you in the face. It's happened to me multiple times. I always wear safety glasses. And after about 10 minutes of cleaning this, things are starting to look good. Make sure the uh, butterfly valve on the inside of the carburetor and the throat of the carburetor moves freely. Um, if your choke was on, or off, just make sure that everything moves around, that the varnish has not made that butterfly valve stick uh, closed. Now this is the main jet, that screw at the bottom of the bowl. I'm taking a brass brush and just kind of cleaning up around it, spraying inside the tiny little holes. There's a hole on the very end of the screw and then holes um, that are in the threads themselves of the screw. And you can take a twist tie and burn off the end of it. And that's, that wire size is perfect for cleaning out any of these small little areas. And after about 30 minutes, I poured the acetone into a jar. And again, it comes out looking like this, all of the dissolved gunk that it got out. But it's actually pouring out now, which is a good sign. And it's not just trickling out or dribbling out. So I know that things should be good to go. I, had, I went ahead and dunked the uh, hose in there for about five minutes, 10 minutes on each side till the hose was cleaned out. And now it's just time to reconnect the carburetor. Make sure you have all of the gaskets in place. There should be a gasket between the carburetor and the engine. And there should be a gasket right there between the carburetor and the air filter assembly. Went ahead and lined that up properly. I happen to have uh, one of these gaskets from a previous job. 
Once the air filter assembly is back on, you just kind of got to get the rest of everything screwed on. Just takes a few minutes. And I'm an idiot. As you can see, I'm working on a rug out in my garage. This was a rug for my daughter's room that was all stained up from nail polish and everything. And I thought it'd be a great idea to put it out in the garage just to work on. And you'll see later why this is a bad idea. But I'm going to redeem myself here by pouring some uh, gasoline while I know I'm in frame. So I'm focusing on what I'm doing. And go ahead and prime the carburetor. And we'll give it a pull. And it starts right up. It runs a little rough here, and that did so for about a minute or two off camera. I let it run and it cleaned itself right out after uh, burning everything out that was kind of gunky on there. And it runs perfectly fine. Um, I should have turned off the engine before I pulled the recoil cord back slowly there. Um, I had freed it from um, its retainer there and I forgot to clamp the retainer back down. But as you can see, um, the lawnmower sucks things up and it did suck the rug up, so don't make this mistake. All right guys, that's it. As you can see, that took maybe an hour of my time. It was super easy to fix. The main problem, like we saw, was that the uh, gas tank was completely clogged or at least 90% restricted. The fuel line itself was a little bit clogged as well and the carburetor was all gunked up, all the jets. There's just all that old gasoline that was not treated with sea foam, um, just basically turned to a sticky, tacky varnish and the smell is just absolutely putrid uh, once you started taking it apart. I did end up using a new gasket between the carburetor and the air filter. Um, I did happen to have a bunch of spare parts from previous jobs sitting around, so I did find a gasket that worked. And then I did replace the little um, the float needle seat inside as well, the little rubber O-ring type thing. When I was testing the carburetor, you flip it upside down when you put it back together. You flip it upside down before you install it, uh, but the carburetor is completely assembled, and you blow through the uh, fuel inlet uh, tube going into the carburetor and you shouldn't be able to blow into it. That float needle should drop and should be plugging up the uh, float needle seat. And I was able to get air through there, so I ended up replacing that, and I happen to have one of those as well that fit in there. So if you did have to purchase something, maybe an Amazon purchase, you could get away with something under $10, and you'd have this thing rocking and rolling again. And if you go to your small engine repair shop that's local to you, they might charge you upwards to 20, 25 bucks to probably buy a whole new carburetor repair kit, and usually they'll sell a uh, OEM um, kit as well. I did go ahead and change the oil in this before I'm going to return it to my neighbor. Um, I have no idea how long this thing was neglected by the previous owner and I have no idea if any gasoline got mixed in with that oil so I took care of that and plus it was over the uh, overfill line so um, I don't want any problems with too much pressure building up in the crankcase. And I will sharpen the blades before I return it because that's just good customer service.